welcome to the local campaign, helping voters make an informed choice in the upcoming municipal election. I'm Kim Wilson and I'll be your host this evening. Tonight we have the Cambridge Ward 6 debate. Cambridge's 6th Ward is located in the city's southwest end. Its boundaries are made up of North Dumfries Township to the south, St. Andrews Street to the west, Concession Street to the north, and a combination of Regional Road 36 and Cheese Factory Road on the east. Some features within Ward 6 are the southern portion of Galt, Churchill Park, and the so Southwood neighborhood. The candidates vying for this council seat are incumbent Shannon Adshade, Peter Renko, and Kurt Dittner. Stephen Davis and Sa Sandy Faulkner were also, are also running but are unable to attend tonight's debate. Speaking order was drawn before the debate, so with his opening remarks, here's Kurt Dittner. Hello, my name's Kurt Dittner and I'm running to be your Ward 6 Councillor. Crime and the decline in the quality of life resulting from the actual and perceived feelings of one's own personal safety. This is the feedback I'm encountering most frequently in the canvassing of the ward. We need to improve the downtown and the intercity neighborhood by way of more visible community policing. This combined with moving the Cambridge shelter, known as the Bridges, to a more suitable location. The fight against the safe injection sites. In moral terms, keep drug users alive outweighs supposed moral evil of drug use. However, these safe injection sites infringe on the rights of those who want, to do, who want nothing to do with illegal drugs. I don't believe in normalizing the problem. More emphasis should be placed on reducing the problem by way of rehabilitation. I lived in Ward 6 for the last 12 years and I'm ready to be your counselor because I deeply care about the community and want to make positive impact. As counselor, I'll be working for you, listening to your concerns, identifying and analyzing the problems, implementing solutions and monitoring the results. No longer will your calls of concerns be rerouted to various channels testing your patients. As Ward 6 Counselor, I will attend all council meetings as your representative. I'll be there for you, and in return, I'm asking for your vote. Thank you. Thanks. Shannon. Hi, uh, I'm Shannon Adshade, and uh, I, when I was um, deciding to run for council, I wasn't sure if I was going to run again or not. But when I, looked at, when I looked at the state of affairs in Cambridge, I thought it was really important for me to run again. I feel I've got more experience and knowledge in my first term, and that will make me a better counselor in my second term. But there's a lot of, lot of issues uh, that I'd like to see implemented. Number one is recreational facilities. Uh, I'd like to see a spot. We need to determine a location for the multiplex, or if that's not the case, we do really need an urgent upgrade in our cities and communities, arenas, pools, gymnasiums and recreational facilities because they're antiquated and they're old, they're an embarrassment and this should have been done decades ago. So that's something that I really want to see go through this second term. Secondly, I really want to see LRT extended to Cambridge. Uh, we're paying for the service. It will help develop our downtown cores greatly and it will also be a viable transportation option. So with LRT, but we got to make sure, we've been doing a good job I think on council, we're trying to make sure we have a proper route so that it's not infringing on the rights of residents in residential areas. So LRT is important. I also believe Go Train is something that's very important, something that's been on the agenda for far too long. Uh, studies show Cambridge has more commuters going to Toronto than any, uh, anywhere else in Waterloo Region. So I think we're long overdue. We need service. We need Go Train service. Cambridge is the closest city. So I would really like to see Go Train service put into Cambridge. Thirdly, also we need uh, increased police presence. We need to increase police presence in our core areas, especially I believe it's a community safety issue. And I believe we're under service and understaffed in the community as well uh, in large. So I'd really like to see increased police presence in our community and especially in our downtown cores, including foot patrol. As I said earlier, it's a community safety issue. And lastly, uh, I believe we need to, we, we have an urgent need to increase affordable housing in senior housing, nursing homes and apartments. And if you're, I would, I'm hoping that you think I've done a good job and you're willing to support me on October 22nd. Thank you. Thanks. Peter. Hi, my name is Peter Renko and I am running for Ward 6 as well. 
and a lot of people have asked me why are you running and you know it comes down to the fact that I've speak, spoken with many people and there is a call for change. I, I hear it every day when I'm out on the street. We need change. We, I'm bringing accessibility to the area. Uh, one of the biggest complaints I hear is I never get called back. Uh, I feel that, you know, as a city council representative, we have to the community expects better from us. We have to deliver that service. We have to let the public know that we are with them and we are working together hand in hand. These are key issues and building that bridge between the community and City Hall, that's what's important here to help rebuild that trust. Together and only together can we get the job done efficiently. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. So. Following these opening statements, we're going to move to our question and answer period, and I'll be um, asking the questions. So the first question, and Kurt, you touched on it very briefly, but I didn't hear anything from the other two um, during their opening statements. In regards to safe injection sites, have they've been a very contentious issue in Cambridge. Do you support safe injection sites in our community, and if so, where should it be? And we'll start with you, Shannon. Okay. Uh, thank you, Kevin. That is something that is in my campaign literature. There's four points I got to, but I didn't get to the fifth point. So thank you for the question. Um, my, my belief is I agree with the interim control bylaw City Council has put in place that for a year will not allow a uh, safe injection site into our downtown core. I think that's really important. We, we sent a couple of councillors on a mission to find out, and we tried to get some more st statistics and some more information about safe injection sites. And my belief it's a core area is not, Cambridge does not have a larger enough core area to sustain. It would cause too much damage to the downtown and to, to the residents that's downtown. My real, my strong belief is the best place for a safe injection site, and we do need one. There are people and vulnerable people in need, but I believe the best site is the Cambridge Memorial Hospital. It, it would have the services, it would have the staff, um, it would have wrapper, I think for a safe injection site to be successful, it needs wraparound services such as mental health and addiction counseling. So the hospital to me would be the ideal location. And also too, I know from my understanding and from the information we have when we're talking about safe injection sites, a lot of the residents don't like going to a standalone site because it's such a stigma. There's so much stigma applied to it that they feel embarrassed and they don't want to go. So being at the hospital, people are there for any various reasons. So that would be, I think, a, a, I think they would feel safe to go. So in many ways, I believe the best place for a safe injection site is Cambridge Memorial Hospital. Thanks, Shannon. You're welcome. Peter. I do agree it was a good question. Thank you for asking it. I do have to say in our house, we do not support an SIS. And and majority of the people that I have spoken with are not in favor of an SIS. I don't believe at this time we have enough research. I don't believe that we actually have the wraparound services in place. I do agree that I do like the interim in control bylaw. Uh, it, it was a great start. I would have actually liked to have seen it as, as citywide. Uh, right now, we are waiting on the provincial government to make a decision as to whether the funding will become available. And at this time, we are not ready for it. I, we have I have spoken to a lot of citizens, and at the bottom line is that we just don't want it. And that's uh, where I, how I feel about it. Thank you. Thanks, Kurt. Okay, my number one uh, campaign issue is to say no to SIS, safe injection sites or SCS, safe consumption sites. Uh, there's a number of issues tied to that. Uh, we've tried to have meetings through the Better uh, Cambridge Association to sit down with the region and discuss their, their plans and why they want it downtown Galt. And they have this formula, and it comes out of BC 10 years ago, that addict will only walk 10 minutes to do an injection. And I don't believe that. If, if that is the scenario, then we wouldn't be seeing uh, criminal activity, drug dealing, addiction throughout the city and throughout the province. If the provincial government mandates it, only mandates that we have to have an SIS site, I would like to see and only agree with having it at the Cambridge Memorial Hospital. I've run into criticism on this issue because they think that I am saying to let them into emergency. No, I want a separate wing and a separate division at the hospital 
with nursing care and doctors available so the wraparound services are there. I will not, and I would like to see the interim bylaw to make a permanent bylaw that it's not in the city of Cambridge. Now that's far reaching, and right now we're waiting for the, the Ford government to make a decision on this. It's been uh, basically under review, and there's been meetings going on. So my answer is no. Thank you. Thanks, Kurt. Okay, for the next question, um, Shannon, you did touch on it a little bit about LRT and GO. So I'd be interested to hear a little bit more about that um, in terms of what is your vision for the future of transportation in Cambridge? And we'll start with Peter. I think that the LRT was something that we never asked for in the first place. I, I actually think it was imposed on us. And I think due to the long term reach of it actually becoming obtainable in Cambridge, I don't think it's a possibility. I think that we should be looking elsewhere, rapid transit buses to and from Kitchener, to and from Milton, as per se, and I absolutely think that we need to work to get uh, transportation directly to Aldershot. Uh, right now, we are a commuting city, and I feel that the South Line deserves more attention than it's been getting lately, and I like the idea of proposing that we come up with a rapid transit system that takes us directly to Aldershot, gets us on the South Line, and we can uh, eliminate our commute time, uh, we can eliminate extra cars on the road. So moving forward with GO service, I think it's a yes, it's worth fighting for, and I think we need it. As for LRT, I just think that we were imposed on something that we didn't ask for, and I actually don't believe that it would get the service and the use for the cost that, it would get, that is required to make it happen. Thank you. Thanks. Kurt? On the LRT, um, my basic personal opinion is that uh, we shouldn't, in the city of Cambridge, be paying taxes for the LRT until we get the LRT. And currently, the project is two years behind schedule, $50 million over budget. The local motors have problems with the engineer that has to, engineer, the engines have to be still fixed. What I suggest is, is till we get the LRT, which looks like maybe 10 years from now, is that I think the Cambridge residents should have free bus service on Saturdays until the region gets the getty up and get this project going for Cambridge. There's been problems in Gal uh, downtown Preston with the route. The businessmen have suggested a route that they didn't approve. The residents don't want the route that is approved. I think the residents of Preston have to make that decision. The LRT is going to come. We have to get the best deal for it. And I support also on Gold Train, I support the route going to through Guelph and connecting up through Georgetown into Toronto. I think it's going to happen faster. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kurt. Shannon. Thanks. Um, the, rea the reality of LRT is whether we want it or not is coming and we're paying for it. So I think we need to be any wisdom in the matter is that we do need to I I hope to get it to Cambridge as soon as possible. We're paying for the service. So um, if I'm paying for somebody, I certainly would like to service. Um, we look, when, we look at, when we look at the LRT, Kurt mentioned that too, like it's important. We've changed the route many times. I think a lot of the, a lot of the residents of Preston are much more happy with the latest proposal. It's taking a lot less of Moore Street and some of those residences. So I think we've come a long way in the route, but it doesn't mean it's finished. We really got to make sure that the LRT comes to Cambridge as soon as possible. It also doesn't impact residences and try to make it our best route possible. But the sooner we can get it here, the better. It would help develop. It would be a great in impetus for developing our downtown course and give us another viable transportation option. And don't forget, we are paying for it anyway. And as for GO Train, yes, I agree. The Guelph, I think the Guelph solution, the latest one put forward by the, by the province, uh, the last signal in the region is going to study the Guelph route. I think that's a viable possibility. But we really need to keep, this has been going on for lo far too long. We really need to lobby the province. We need, we need to lobby the region. We need GO Train Transit, as I said before. There's more commuters in Cambridge than anywhere else in Wyerley Region going to Toronto every day. We need to get cores off the 401. We need to make commute times better and safer. So GO Train is a necessity. So that's something we really need to push for in this coming term of council. Thank you. Thanks, Shannon. Mm -hmm. For the next question, you, you've all slightly touched on the cost of the LRT. So in the bigger picture, 
what would you do to approach the massive and complex issue of the city budget of about $130 million? And how would you ensure that you're a good student steward of the public purse? How would you approach the 2019 municipal budget? And we're going to start with you, Kurt. I firmly believe in resource budgeting, which is a takeoff from cost, zero cost budgeting, which means that each department has to build on their needs and not their wants. And right now, currently, the budget, when we see it, is three inches thick. I don't think any accountant in the world can interpret that. So we rely on the administration to tell us what's in the budget. So what I'd like to see is a 20-page portfolio. I'm, I'm a former trustee with the Catholic Separate Board, and we used to get a portfolio, like a 20-page summary of the topics, and then we can ask questions going into the budget. There's no way that I can interpret a three-inch budget. It was a simple, simple, simple project supposed to happen on Grand Avenue. Infrastructure to rebuild the streets, the water mains, and the sewers. I had to call three, the mayor's office, two other counselors, and two engineers. And they tried really hard to explain that the services are fine, but they couldn't explain why the budget, that part of the budget was canceled. I asked where the million dollars went. Like someone's got to be able to answer me. You take a million dollars of the budget, just tell me the truth. Did it go into the bridge? It's a nice bridge. It's got nice colors. I drove by it today. I love the little walking bridge. But is that where the money went? Or did it go into another project? I just asked that simple question. A month later, I still don't have an answer. That's the problem with the budget process. It gets fed by administration to the counselors. And the information that the counselors require or need is not provided. You have to put it back into English. And that's what. And I guarantee or promise in my term that we will not go above the cost of living the current budget plus the cost of living in the next term, taken into assessment values. But we have to hold it. No more 5% increases, no more, no more wants, like I want this big multiplex. We need arenas, we don't need a big multiplex. Thank you. Thanks. Shannon. Yeah, I think, um, I think the problem we've had with the budget and the, and the translation of the budget is I think it's, not, it's very comp complex and complicated and I really think we need to reduce it into more layman's terms. I really think it's important that we get out in the community. We've done some budget roadshows the last couple of years, which I really think is good, but it'd be really nice to see better attendance. There's, there's gotta be a better, better way of getting the public involved and getting them to realize what, and make it a more of a simplified bud, a budget. I think right now it's so complicated. It is very complex. That I think a lot of people are just, even accountants, I know there's a Cambridge Taxpayer Support Group, and that's something they wanna do. They wanna make it much more account, they wanna make it more simplified so that people can understand it rather than looking at, you're saying a binder this thick, that's very, very difficult to read. And, and so I, th I would like to see more community access, and I would like to see a simplified, modified budget put forward to the community. Thanks, Shannon. You're welcome. Peter. I believe working with the budget, being what a would-be first-time counselor, would be a new process for me where education would be key. Working with staff and outside services like the tax support group, they have offered their services and I am absolutely more than willing to work with them to learn the fine points of the budget and to make those help make those decisions. Uh, it all comes down to it being a team effort. I do agree that I, the in public input on the needs, the wants, the direction that the city needs to travel is very important. And I absolutely support that. I mean, I, I pay taxes in the city the same as everybody else. Uh, so for me at this point, it's more about learning the process, developing the process, working with the external groups and internal groups, and making the right decisions as it comes down. Thank you. Thanks. So um, I'd like to hear something about the economic development whether it's a priority to you, and if so, what would you do over the next four years to help council to develop a strategy for bringing new business to the city and making Cambridge an even more prosperous place? And we'll start with Shannon. Okay, I think we do have the uh, Waterloo Region uh, Economic Development Corporation. I think that's something that we've just recently put more emphasis in. I think that's something that we really need to promote because there's a lot of, we've got a great region and we've got a great city. And I think there's a lot of tourist potential, especially in downtown Galt with their beautiful bridges and beautiful churches and so on. So 
I think we need, I think it's important to work uh, as a partnership, but I also think the city's been doing a good job. We've got a lot of new boxwood business campuses almost totally sold out. We've had a really good, we've done a really good job at uh, uh, getting new businesses and new companies to move into the city. And that's something that's, you know, that's vitally important. We get in business and we get better job opportunities for everyone concerned. So yes, uh, developing businesses is, is an important aspect. Thanks, Shannon. Peter? I agree. Bringing business to Cambridge is very important. And we actually need to find out what we want to do. What kind of businesses do we want to bring into our city? I mean, we absolutely have to highlight our, our heritage buildings. We have to highlight our schools. We, it's an absolute must that we highlight the fact that we are a thriving city and we have a wonderful film industry. We can use all of these things to help promote and to build within our city. It's important that we pay attention to public input and pr bringing private sector in to show them that we are open for business. Thank you. Thanks, Peter and Kurt. Okay, my vision of golf growth in the downtown is keyed to the expansion of the School of Architecture. 6,500 6, square feet expansion. Now there's discussion on is it going to be on the one side of Grand or downtown. I'd like to see it developed. I think downtown is a good location. Also, uh, there's been concerns that it's going to be put over the existing, they spent a million and a half or a million on redoing the parking lot behind Cafe 13. Well, the architect said they can build above it. I think that that will be the catalyst in the next term. Go with the expansion of the School of Architecture. That will bring more business in. It will bring more students in, bring more foreign investment into the downtown. And the retail will pick up and pick up. And then we're going to, with all the other projects, like the Gas Light District and the, bridge, the new bridge, and a couple allocations for some resources for grants to improve some of the building fronts and give some tax breaks for new business to come in. I'd give them a five-year tax break or a three-year tax break. And if they move out, then they owe the difference. I think we have to promote the downtown. And I think the key in my vision of downtown Galt is going to be the School of Architecture. Thank you. Thanks. So for the next question, um, you've all slightly touched on the downtown area, and I'd like to hear more about whether you think anything needs to be done to make Cambridge a more cycle, cycling-friendly city, and if so, what would that be, Peter? Accessibility through our city is, is key. Uh, we absolutely, we need to be uh, working to build better bike lanes, uh, improving in our, our trails. Uh, there's, uh, cycling's become very popular within the city of Cambridge and we have beautiful trails we, uh, along our waterway systems and we can improve on that. We need better accessibility on our roadways to access these trails, uh, whether it be through signage, uh, lane reduction so that we implement bike lanes uh, that are dedicated bike lanes uh, it, uh, those are key issues, and uh, I think that we're on the right path, but we absolutely can do better moving forward. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Kurt? Um, as president of the St. Andrews Neighborhood Association, I work very closely in the West Galt development. There's 1,800 new homes going there. And the first meetings I went to, I was, I was actually very surprised that a priority of the residents in West Galt, which is slightly outside our ward, but we're all very close neighbors, is that they wanted bike lanes, trails in the new development. And they had meetings with the developer and the city and the developer, and it's coming. There's going to be new trails. I think the biggest problem with the trail system, they ju we just got to link them more together and advertise more of the links. And if they're not linked, I think we have to link them. Uh, right now, I've heard a lot of concern that people won't go on the trails because of the situation with the, the drug uh, situation in Cambridge. Uh, people are fearful to go on the trails. I've walked on the trails. I've found dozens of needles. I've reported it. I've seen homeless people, the tents set up. And I, I don't get fearful very often. But yeah, it's a concern. And people have said that they want to use the trails. They want to use Churchill Park. They want to use the Hessler trails. And, and then the new trails come in over West Coast. I think that we have to implement. I mean, 
We have an ambassador program downtown Galt that they used to have safety patrols. I don't know where the safety patrols disappeared to. They said we have ambassadors now. I would like to see the safety patrols return to the downtown Galt and also safety patrols, even if it's community oriented safety patrols in the trails uh, going forward. And so that the community can use the existing trails and the new trails to build. So I'm very supportive of new trails. Thank you. Thanks, Kurt and Shannon. Yeah, definitely. Cycling is important, the cycling and trails. Um, I think we've done a good job as a council with new development that we've really, we've always asked to see that we always want to increase bike cycle trails. That's very key to new developments. And I've seen some real improvement in Cambridge recently with increase with these uh, bike lanes. So that we're, I can see it's getting more and more widely used and accepted. And I th I'm all for that too. And I think as we need, we have some beautiful trails in Cambridge. We're doing a really good job. We've been recently trying to link more and more of the trails together. But as we link the trails together with more bike lanes, I think that's the key. So I'm pretty, and I'm pretty, been pretty pleased with the how as a council we've been, in, especially in the new developments and even some when we're doing reconstruction. We're always asking one of the one of the major criteria is to add cycling remains into the new developments or to new construction. Thanks, Thanks Shannon. Okay. So, a couple of you touched on homelessness and um, new development. What would you do to address homelessness and affordable living in Cambridge? And we're going to start with you, Kurt. Okay. We have a need for affordable housing. We have a need because we have three issues happening on the streets of Cambridge. We have mental health, homelessness, and drug abuse and addiction and drug dealers. Now my suggestion is, and working closely with the bridges, we relocate the bridges to a quieter, safer bus route neighborhood, industrial commercial. Everybody's worried, we don't want the bridges moved. What they're, what they're really saying behind the scenes is we don't want to move to Galt, out of Galt. We don't want to move to Hespeler or Preston. Okay, I'm not suggesting that's where we're going to go. And we're going to have meetings going forward with the bridges to, find, to develop a committee to find the relocation together with citizens. Now, what I propose is a smaller downsized homeless shelter with two wings, women for men and for women. Right now they're on the top floor of the bridges and, they're and they're, there's a tent or a separation, very little for, you know, safety and, and they're sleeping in cots. I would like to see that project moved over and then that building turned into affordable housing. Currently the second floor is affordable housing and then take the dropout center out of the sec uh, main floor and what, we, what we're proposing or what I'm proposing and it's already, it's not just my idea but we're going to work on where we're providing meals there is that we're going to get the church groups and community groups all involved to provide meals on a daily basis at a different locations. So we take the pressure of the overcrowding out of the bridges because they're overflowing, they're on the street it's causing a lot of problems. We have to build more affordable housing. The satellite hotel, the only, prob the only thing with the satellite hotel is I think there's not, a, I think I'd like to see more units. There are units, I'd like to see more. And then with the West Galt development, the developer has set aside thousands of dollars, I don't know the exact number, six or seven hundred thousand dollars, maybe three hundred thousand dollars for affordable housing. Use that money. 500, okay, 500,000, and use that money. It's been set aside for affordable housing only, and put it at the bridges. Thank you. Thanks, Kurt. Shannon. Yeah, Kim, can I, could you ask, could I ask you to say the question again? Sorry, yeah. Certainly. Yeah, okay. What would you do to address homelessness and affordable living in Oh, Cambridge? okay, yeah, thank you. Um, affordable housing, there's a real need. There's a wait list, you know, for years deep. So, and I mentioned that earlier too, we really have a, a great need to increase affordable housing in here. If we could get some of the homeless in affordable housing, that would that could make a huge difference. So I know we've got two projects on the go now on Hesper Road. We've got the old satellite motel and we've got 175 Hesper Road. Uh, and w as a council, we've made a real priority, a real priority to try to increase uh, try to increase affordable housing. So that's a key, that's a key. Housing is the key. I think we get housing and support services out for the homeless, we can get more of them off the streets. And as for, as for the bridges, um, I think it is a good idea that the bridges are moving. And I do agree with what Kurt said about moving into maybe a commercial area um, where it's not, it not impacting so much on the downtown core or, or, or different residences. And also too, we need the wraparound, we need the wraparound services too, not just a homeless shelter, but there needs to be, there needs to be wraparound services right there as part of the facility or right next door. So I think, that's the, I think that's the key to homelessness and the key to affordable housing. Thank you. 
Thanks, Shannon. Peter. Homelessness is 100% a complex issue. Uh, it's not just mental illness. There are many other regions. I was actually at the Bridges today for a tour, and I can say on camera that they are doing a good job. They've recognized that there are issues, and they are working in a new direction, and I support 100% the direction that they're traveling uh, towards. I uh, believe that myself to be on council, I would definitely want to work with the Affordable Housing Committee uh, but I'm also willing to explore other options like working in the, with the private sector, like landlords and tenants and builders and developers. I, I believe that that's a good direction where we uh, could create committees from real organizations in the private sector to work with us at City Hall and together we can build and develop a plan that is effective and works. Right now, the city's affordable rate average is $847 a month. I mean, the satellite hotel was mentioned. I mean, the lowest rate right now that's being toted around is $1,300. That's not affordable. I mean, so we have to be better. We can build more units, but we need private sector development to help us with this. And it's important that we work together with the people who are experts in this department. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Next question. So we've talked a lot about homelessness and, and drug addiction. And on the flip side of that, how would you like to see the city address the issue of human and coyote interaction in the Churchill Park area? And we're going to start with Shannon. Yeah, that's, uh, that's interesting because uh, <laughs> that was just an issue just in the spring and summer. So um, yeah, I think, uh, I think we've got a lot of advice uh, from nature groups that the best way to the best way to treat the situation is 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 to fence it off, okay, but not to not to trap the coyotes and and to, because I because they're a very they're a very close family unit and if you take one or trap one it really damages the rest of them, so my my understanding is that there's ways you can properly maintain, uh, and have the you know fence it off so it's safe, make sure people aren't going directly into that area, but make sure that make sure that you make sure that we have the resources, the knowledge of, of the groups, the wildlife groups that have the knowledge how to maintain a sa how to maintain safety, but at the same time not destroying the coyotes. Okay. Thanks, Shannon. You're welcome. Pete. Public awareness would be key on that one. Uh, I mean, I am frequent at Churchill Park. Uh, I personally haven't seen one, but I definitely have talked to people who have. Um, you know, it, it's tough. I mean, we... We have to coexist with nature. Uh, it's not always comfortable, uh, but it is a requirement that we can't, we can't just remove something because we don't like it. Uh, so I definitely recommend that public awareness uh, on the location of where coyotes are frequenting and living uh, would be paramount. And I believe that if you're walking your dog, you should be walking your dog on a leash through a public park. I mean, it's, I would hope that with public awareness that safety would be priority to the individual who's using that space uh, to always be aware of where their surroundings are and if there is a known coyote uh, sighting in one part of the park perhaps uh, the possibility of avoiding it uh, could be an option. Thank you. Thanks Peter. Kurt? Well the coyote problem has is, is been around for a long time been on my street, it's been in the park down, down the road from me. I've seen numerous coyotes. They're being pushed out of their natural habitat and they're being forced into the cities for food. And what's happening with the development on the outside of the city, we're gonna get more migration of uh, the coyotes. Uh, trap trapping won't work. Um, I think the idea of uh, signs like saying be careful there are coyotes in the area and some of the number of parks that they're in and so that people with dogs and they have and cats or whatever their pets they, that they're aware that there can be coyotes in the area and they are more numerous than people realize they may think it's just a, a runaway dog and a lot of times they are coyotes um, with uh, the development or the route going through the Shade Mills area, the proposed route, I would like to see it for the bypass on the, on the east side of the city. I'd like to see it to go around the Shade Mill area, I mean, protect the conservation area to the nth degree and uh, not keep moving wildlife all around or endangering wildlife. 
Uh, we have a ty uh, turtle populations that are endangered that we have to protect salamanders. So when we're doing reviews, I know there's an uh, economical committee reviewing the bypass, but again, we're moving wildlife around and, and then people get upset when, they, when they're in, it's in their backyard. So thank you very much. Thanks, Kurt. So for the next question, in your own opinion, we've talked a lot about the, the issues that Cambridge is facing, but I'd like to hear from your own op opinion what is the number one issue facing Ward 6, and how would you address it as a member of City Council? And we'll start with you, Peter. I, uh, that's a great question, thank you. I believe right now, currently, the pedestrian access to cross the street is probably one of the biggest things that people fight every day. I, Ward 6 is a heavily foot trafficked area, and I see all the time people almost running for their lives to cross the street. Uh, I'm a big advocate of trying to promote uh, traffic warning light systems to cross the street. Uh, it's a crosswalk with a lighting system up top. I have posted a video on my uh, Peter Renko Ward 6 Facebook page for those that aren't familiar with it because currently right now in Cambridge we have absolutely none. Uh, I mean, some of the key areas that I see it, we need one on Myers uh, Road. We definitely need one at Osborne and Cedar, uh, which actually isn't Ward 5, but it's neighboring and it's close. Uh, there's a lot of foot traffic that makes its way to Westgate Plaza all day long. Um, that, that kind of accessibility, I believe right now, is top priority in, for Ward 6. And it is something that I'm going to be fighting for. And it's something that I'm committed to see happen in Cambridge all, out, all across the city. Thank you. Kurt. I believe the number one issue in facing Ward 6 is crime, break-ins. Um, I have had more calls on that issue than any other issue. People have come home or woke up in the morning and found someone in their backyard taking their propane tank, been on videotape, called the regional police. The regional police have a number, uh, you know, it's a very high cost issue. I'd like to see more police in the downtown area and in Ward 6. I want to see the associate neighborhood associations meeting with the police on a regular basis with their community liaison officer and showing the real stats. People have told me that they're tired of calling because no one responds and so then in turn then the numbers look like they drop but they're not. They're actually up 43 uh, percent. Major crimes in the Waterloo region is up 43 percent. So it is the biggest number one issue. I would like to see Neighborhood Watch. I'd like to see more policing downtown. I would like to see the ambassador program bringing back the safety program, uh, with the with the students getting summer jobs on their bikes with self, you know, with their walkie talkies. That would give me comfort on the streets. Thank you. Thanks, Kurt. I'm Shannon. Yeah, I think I think the number one uh, priority facing Ward Six, but it's not just Ward Six. Like. I, it's really hard to differentiate just saying for a ward per se. I think it's in Ward 6, but it's the citywide, it's community safety. I believe there's a lot of people right now that don't feel safe walking the trails or walking downtown. So I think I really, as I talked about earlier, I, I think we really need to increase police presence in our core area, especially on foot patrol. We need increased officers throughout the city. And we need to look at, we need to, I think it's a good idea that the bridges is moving. I think it's caused too much, it's too dense. It's caused some issues in our downtown core. So I think community safety, we need to feel safe that, you know, we have, the one good thing the city has done is establish ambassador programs that go out throughout the city, that go and clean up any messes and trails or if there's any uh, tent cities anywhere within the city, picking up needles. I think that's been a very well done, very well, uh, sorry? Oh, sorry, oh, okay. I think, uh, okay, sorry. I thought you were talking to me, no, Ken, sorry. No, sorry. But I think, uh, I think community, so I think community safety is the number one, number one priority. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, <laughs> no, sorry. Jen. I couldn't read sorry that. about that. Okay. Sorry about okay. I confused That's okay. you. Hmm. Okay, so for the next question, um, so we talked about the things that are plaguing Ward Six, all of Cambridge. If you are elected, what initiatives would you undertake first and why? And we'll start with Kurt. My, f my first initiative would be to uh, get the safety patrols back downtown Cambridge. Number two, have meetings with the uh, chief of police, the deputy chief of police, even take them for a tour. I'm sure they're aware of the situations. Talk to my neighbors, 
set them up to have meetings saying, yes, there is people in our backyard. There are people passed out in the bus stops. We have people dancing on the bridges in a snowstorm. I almost drove over one. I have been personally threatened downtown Galt going to the ATM. And all I wanted to do was go downtown and have a nice meal. And I still went and had my nice meal. I've driven up Can-Am Parkway where I've seen an attic fall right in front of my car again. So that would be my number one project is get the ball rolling. Let's get the police involved. Let's get some more money through the regional government. They're holding the purse strings. We have to put pressure on them, more pressure and more pressure. Thank you. Yeah, I think um, that's a good question, Kim. Thanks. I look, I look at the priorities of, if elected again as recreational facilities. I touched on that before. We need to find a location for the multiplex, or if we don't find a location for the multiplex, we really need to upgrade our arenas, our pools, our gymnasiums, our recreational facilities. They're antiquated, they're old, they're embarrassment. This should have been done decades ago. So that's one of the main reasons why I wanted to run again to this, this term, is I think that's essential that gets put through. As for LRT, I think I mentioned that too before, we need to extend the RLT to Cambridge as soon as possible. We're paying for the service. That is vitally important. It will help, LRT will help economic development in our core areas, as you've seen in Kitchener, the intensification and the great construction boom. LRT coming to Cambridge will help that. It'll give us another viable option. Go Transit is a key. There's far too many people here driving the 401. As we, are a, we are a commuting city. There's, as I said before, there's more more commuters in Cambridge than anywhere else in Waterloo Region. So, and we're the closest city to Toronto. So I like the idea of going the route to Guelph, but whether, I know there's been a problem with the Milton line because CP Rail owns the line and they don't want to give up the traffic, but there might be a way to sort that out. But no matter what, we need GO Train service. Number three, we need increased, we need increased police presence in our the whole city as a whole. I think we're underserviced. And I believe we need certainly need increased police presence in our downtown core areas. And that includes foot patrol officers who are on the ground, can see what's happening and monitoring the situation. And finally, we touched on this earlier too, but we need uh, to help, the great help for the home, the great way of the helping the homeless is to establish affordable housing. Okay, that's the key. There's a long waiting list. If we can establish housing, it gives people hope, it gives them opportunity. And like we do have two new developments. We got one on 175 Hester Road and just recently the Satellite Motel where that's been put into, that's going to be put into, um, into uh, affordable housing as well. So that's a new development on board. But uh, affordable housing and seniors housing. There's a long waiting list for nursing homes and for apartments. So, uh, so we look at nursing homes and affordable housing. Thank you. Thanks, Shannon. I also agree some of the initiatives that I'd like to see implemented with definitely upgrades of our arenas uh, and baseball. Uh, baseball seems to be overlooked. Uh, right now our fields are, they're not up to quality. Uh, we, I can tell you, I mean our house is a baseball household uh, that I see it all the time. Uh, we sh uh, should be looking at our parks and possibly having a baseball complex. I know we have the soccer complex coming in, uh, which is fantastic. I'd like to see some cricket pitches put into, into our uh, communities. Uh, that's an important one as well. It's, uh, it, it's definitely something we should be looked at. Uh, but again, I wanna highlight the, the pedestrian warning light systems. Uh, uh, that is uh, key for uh, a lot of our walking citizens. And I definitely think that uh, the safety in our community is also important and definitely things that I want to be a part of. Uh, yes, we do need more police, 100%. Uh, uh, but uh, to acquire more police in our downtown cores is more complex than just saying we need more police. Uh, so to get into City Hall and to make that happen and to be a part of the group to make these uh, changes is definitely something I'm interested in. And I absolutely think that we can do better uh, with a good team in place. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. So for your next question, I've heard a lot of similarities, some differences. So I'm, I would like to know why it's important for you to run. Why do you want to serve? What differentiates you from your opponent? And we'll start with Shannon. Okay, I think you can. That's a good question because I wasn't sure I was going to run again. I was really I was really came to the last minute. But as, as I said before, I think the reason I want to run or w why I'm running again is number one. I don't know if I touched on this earlier, but I think I've learned a lot from my first term. 
I think I'm going to be a much more effective and better counselor in my second term. I think anybody the first term is a really high, high heavy learning curve, and I think uh, I think this time, uh, I think with my experience and knowledge, I'd be I'd make a better counselor. So that's that's one reason why. Also, too, I think I've got a platform of things I've seen on the agenda that I think I talked about earlier that I really want to see implemented. That includes recreation facilities, LRT, Go Train affordable and seniors housing and increased police in our community. So I know I've touched on that quite a bit, but I think that's something agenda. That's something I felt some of these were on the, some of these were on the agenda would be when I was running last time. So I feel a little frustrated that we haven't accomplished that, but I really want to see, this is a really important term of council and I really want to see these projects come to fruition and be completed. So um, that's, that's why I think I'm going to run again. I think, I think the experience I've had the first term and he asked what differentiates me from the other candidates. I think I've had that experience. I've learned a lot from it. And I've grown a lot from it. Thank you. Thanks, Shannon. Mm -hmm. and Peter. I can say that uh, for me, I am committed to accessibility. Uh, to be work as a ward councillor in the city of Cambridge. It's not my voice coming to council. I'm committed to making your voice come to council. That for me is one of the driving forces and something that I really feel is lacking and something that is required. I'm committed to the process. I am offering to have community meetings once a month, uh, which I'll touch on in my closing statements. Uh, it's that level of rebuilding that trust between the community and our local government is priority. It, it has to happen. We all have to feel better about where we live. Uh, and that, that's it. Thank you. Thanks. And Kurt? Okay. The main reason I'm running is, as I think, with my background, uh, my education, I have a degree in economics. I can work through the budgets, get to the bottom line. I'm a prior trustee with the separate school board, so I understand how the mechanisms of the city council operate. I've been to city council numerous times in the last year. Shannon has seen me a number of times on a number of hot topics. Um, as president of the St. Andrews Neighborhood Association, I've tried to work closely with the other associations to bring an agenda of the what the neighbors would like to see, which is, you know, programming, in the schools, I would personally like to work with uh, numerous another neighborhood association to bring in um, a drop-in center for use on Fridays. I'd like to cut the red tape. It's been three years that I've tried to get that project off the ground, and and, and basically the planning department at the city of Cambridge says, "Oh, you have to work with this association. You have to go over to see that association." I've gone to the financing of Cambridge, saying, "Why don't you just..." You, we have interested members, interested people in the ward that want to do positive things. I believe, I know I enjoy talking, working with people and getting issues settled. I will make a commitment that I will answer people's questions. I have, currently I am an insurance broker so I handle tough questions all day long. I have to give people answers they may not like but I will find the answer and I won't pass the buck and I'm not saying anybody's passing the buck. I'm saying I will promise to take your phone call, find out what the answer is, and not just say you have to call region. I had a snowfall problem, the city of Cambridge. I had explained to the, to the people at the city of Cambridge that it's a regional bus stop. The, the region plows one side, the city plows the other. We have a contractor involved. It took two days. It shouldn't be that complicated to say, look it, let's work together. If the issue is provincial or federal, then I will find the answer for you, but I'll give you the answer. I won't say, call Mr. ABC. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kurt. Um, okay, so we can move on now to the closing statements, and we're going to start with you, Peter. Thank you. As your Ward 6 counselor, I am committed to accessibility. I have chosen It's My Neighborhood too as my model because I want Ward 6 constituents to feel empowered to voice their concerns and believe that together we can build and maintain a safe and healthy community. I will be open and available to address all concerns by hosting monthly meetings and online platforms. I have pledged to address pedestrian safety by fighting for pedestrian warning light systems. As our city grows, so do our traffic concerns, threatening the safety of our community. As your counselor, I want to address the safety of our parks and the viability of our outdoor pools. I believe that these are invaluable resources for families and I want to promote our outdoor experiences and community engagement. 
I proudly live in Ward 6. I'm dependable, I'm dedicated, hardworking, I'm very approachable, and I'm passionate about positive change. On October 22nd, vote for me, Peter Renko, because it's my neighborhood too. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Shannon. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's um, the last four years has been my honor and privilege to serve you as your Ward 6 councillor, and I would be honored and privileged to do so again for the next four years. I think I also, to start off, I'd like to thank Rogers tonight for hosting the debate and really thank you, the, the viewer, for turning in and spending, ha, spending the time to listen to, our, to what we have to say tonight. So thank you. When, uh, when I was thinking about running again, I wasn't sure. I was debating back in May whether I'd run again or not. And as I, as I mentioned earlier, I think the reason I decided to run, to run again is there's so many items that need to be attended to. There's an agenda that I really want to see passed and put through. And I, and I don't want to have to, I don't really want to go into the whole details again because I'd be repeating myself again, but that includes a new multiplex, a new location for the multiplex, or at least finding we need a great, in, we need a great upgrade in our, in our arenas, our pools, our gyms and our recreation facilities. Cambridge, is, it's embarrassing, it's outdated, it's antiquated, and that's something I ran on the last time, and I feel really, I feel, I'm, I'm very upset that that hasn't come to fruition yet, so either find a place for the multiplex, a location, or if that doesn't happen, if that's not possible, we really need a huge upgrade in our recreational facilities, especially our arenas and our pools and our gyms. And as mentioned too, some baseball diamonds too would be, would be good as well, so uh, that's really important to me. Also too, LRT, as I told you before, LRT, we need to extend that to Cambridge as soon as possible. We need to get GO train service to Cambridge, that's essential. We also need, as I said before, we also need increased increase police presence in our cores, in our, in our city, citywide. It's a matter of community safety, so that's essential. And the final point is we need to develop, and I'm pleased to say we've got a couple of projects in the work for affordable housing but we really, need to, we really need to increase our affordable housing and we need to, there's seniors on a waiting list for, for care homes. We need apartments for seniors and care homes. That's another very important issue. So that's why I decided to run and I feel I've had the experience, I feel on, Oct on October 22nd, if you think I've done a good job, please feel free, please feel considered to support Shannon Anchi for your Ward 6 counselor. Thank you. Thanks Shannon. Thank you. And Kurt. I'd like to extend a warm thank you to Rogers for hosting this debate, but more importantly to you for taking the time out of your day to watch this. When elected as your counselor, our voice will be heard, our issues will be addressed, and together we will make a difference. I'm asking you for your support, and tonight I will sign a pledge on these issues, and here's my signature, that I will work for the citizens, the taxpayers, the ratepayers, the homeless, people, the, my friends and neighbors of the Ward 6 community. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kurt. And I'd like to thank the Ward 6 candidates for participating in tonight's debate. And make sure to watch Rogers TV on October 22nd for up to the minute results. Thank you for watching and have a good night.